All right, what's going on guys? Dr. Stephen James here to bring you another video. Today is my weekly review of this week's episode for The Walking Dead. It is called The Lucky Ones. And spoiler warning if you are not caught up with the episode. Uh, to start with, we have a recap from uh, what's been going on from Steph, from Stephanie, I, I, I mean Max. We find out in this episode is her real name. Yeah, it turns out there was never really any Stephanie. I mean, it, as far as we could tell, it was pretty much the only thing she made up was her name. Out of all the incriminating information that was shared, since they met over the radio transmissions, that's the one thing she lied about. I don't know, I thought that was kind of weird. As I kind of predicted in the uh the last video review from last week it um it turns out that eugene was indeed not ready to hear it after looking back he realizes that he is lied to ever since uh, he appeared in season four he lied to abraham and rosita and he mentions that when they're sitting in the the park of the commonwealth which i have to say they were that was a really nice spot for for a bench i mean just look at it so uh yeah eventually uh eugene apologizes for his outburst and for neglecting to listen to what max had to say um are they together it doesn't really sound like they're gonna be you know, together forever, and I know there are a lot of fans that are still Team Rosita and Eugene. We'll see. Hopefully. Pamela and Lance going to the three communities, starting with Alexandria, where we find out that Pamela has actually met Deanna. And, wow, was that a callback to season five. So, um, yeah, it turns out they, um... They met since before uh, Pamela was even considering politics. And she mentioned that Deanna was always meant to run Alexandria. After getting caught up and uh, you know, Pamela and Mercer have looked around at the place. Well, they were deciding that they were going to provide. Only problem was Ocean... Only problem was Maggie, the current leader of Hillside still wasn't buying what they were selling because even though they claim no strings attached, Maggie, being the smart one, says that everything comes with a cost. That always seems to be a constant fact, even in a dystopian world. And it does sound like that is the case because at near the end of the episode, Pamela also says that the Commonwealth always comes first. And Hillside being it, being completely loyal to Maggie and Hillside, um, not, wait, Hilltop. There, there's a building at the place I work called Hillside and uh, Hilltop. So it, it's just not a name that I hear too often anymore, Hilltop, so... I get the two mixed up sometimes, forgive me. Pamela and Lance and Mercer visit Ocean's visit Oceanside after Alexandria, so they uh so they meet uh Rachel who has grown up beyond recognition recognition since season seven. Of course, you know, six years later, roughly at you know, kids do tend to age. Can't help it. Before they make it to Hilltop, they meet Maggie on the road, and they actually have an interesting conversation, Pamela and Maggie. Maggie basically says that luck is all a matter of opportunity, and Pamela has had plenty of opportunities, which I, I really have to remember that line because I honestly do kind of agree with that. It's... It's a pretty good uh, philosophy, little uh, word of wisdom. So they get to talking, and even after Lance, I have to say, he was even selling me on this one. I still don't trust his character. He just has one of those untrustworthy faces. Uh, if you see, you know, lights flickering, that's just my ceiling light. It's faulty wiring. It's 
just try to ignore it. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, Lance basically tries to coerce Maggie into, uh, accepting the deal. It turns out he's doing it more for himself than for the good of these people or the Commonwealth. As I said, he doesn't really have the most trustworthy faces. She, he basically tempt, tries to tempt her by saying how good Herschel would benefit from taking the deal. You know, being able to attend a university, a school built by the Commonwealth, and ride a boat between and ride a boat between them. I mean, I mentioned how nice the lake is uh, by the Commonwealth, didn't I? Because it's... Because, yeah, it is, like I said, a really nice one. If my route from school to my place looked like that, that would be the most enjoyable part of my day, probably. Hey, regardless, um, uh, she didn't take the deal, but... After Lance t tells her to consider it, they hear the alarm because they're they're not behind the walls yet. They're uh, most of most of the citizens have tents, so they're pretty much out in the open. They're they're still in the process of building Hilltop, but um yeah they uh, they hear walkers in the woods and while. The others have been using knives because, you know, save ammo, obviously. Um, the Commonwealth soldiers, the militia, they are not at all phased by, um, by that concept because they have an endless supply of them unlike the rest of the world. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting how they could still, because they could still spare the uh, the bullets to uh, just open fire on walkers whenever they want without any concern about the noise by the way I mean everyone knows that if you fire a gun that is unsuppressed you risk bringing more to you but they just don't care I mean honestly when I saw that I thought they looked kind of reckless but but I mean if they're not concerned with running out of ammo, then I guess it isn't really an issue. Come to think of it, doesn't Eugene still have access to that, um, uh, to that place where they made the bu where he made the bullets? Uh, I wonder. But, um, yeah, if, if you know what's going on with that, let me know in the comments. The conversation and hug between Daryl and Maggie, ugh, so warming. It's, it's crazy to think that eight, about eight years ago, I think, what, what year did season two come out? 2011. Yeah, it's crazy to think, like, nine years ago, they met on a farm and they were total strangers. And look how far they've come over the years. It's, it's just poetic, honestly. And Daryl, man, he is, even though he's usually a lone wolf, in the words of Chuck Norris from when he was in The Expendables 2, sometimes it's nice to just run with the pack. And that is what uh and that is what Daryl does. I mean, look at him. He he walks with the militia soldiers so naturally. It's I mean, the it's just perfect synchronization. I'm wondering if he was doing that on purpose or if it was just a coincidence. Because if it was a coincidence, man, that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, they're not completely in sync because the Melissa so soldiers are looking straight and holding rifles while Daryl was, um, well, Daryl was swaying his arms every which way and looking at Maggie. But, um, other than that, I mean, they're, the legs moving together specifically, just really, you know, entertaining to watch and... Quite fascinating somehow. By the way, we're uh, bringing back the Carol is uh, Queen Betch thing now, like uh, Gareth said in season five, because Ezekiel found out that Carol uh, put in a favor to save Ezekiel. I, I really hope it works out for them, even though I'm still anticipating that his character will be killed off. I mean, if his character is killed off now, 
after all that effort, it would totally suck, but I mean, I feel like the I feel like the if if we want the Daryl and Carol spin-off to happen, then I feel like he is going to have to die. Maybe not from the illness, but somehow. Maybe like in the uh the intro to Ghost Rider where um where uh, Johnny sold his soul to s cure his dad from cancer, and yet he's killed off anyway soon after. Uh, may maybe we'll see something like that with Ezekiel minus the uh, the whole devil thing. But, you know, the, the irony to it would still be there. You know, the, the, other, the other things in that formula. Yeah, I mean, Ezekiel didn't really like... Uh, finding that out because um, looking at the other patients that were there who've been waiting for treatment for maybe years uh, they I mean Ezekiel has been has ex has taken on surgery right off the bat like whereas uh, the others who were there longer are still waiting on treatment so, uh, I mean, you can understand how Ezekiel feels there, but Carol, I also understand Carol's motive because she loves him and wants and wants to do what it takes to uh, manipulate the system in order to get Ezekiel the treatment because she knows that if, because if, if Pamela would manipulate, had the option to manipulate the system to save her bastard son Sebastian even though he's an asshole she would still use her pow her power to uh, to save him and you know Carol knows that and he doesn't want Ezekiel to die just because the system is broken in that way so I, I thought that was really cool I think that's everything I need to talk about. Anyway, if I had to rate the episode, I'd give it a... Um... I'm gonna say... 7.9 out of 11. It was, it was a good episode, but... There's not really too much happening. Although, uh, by the... Uh, by the way, uh, Deanna also decides to, uh you know, drop out of Hilltop and go to Commonwealth. And you can see that really broke Mag- that really hurt Maggie. Because, I mean, it's basically disloyalty. It's like what Michonne says to Andrea in Season 3. You chose a warm bed over a friend. And I feel like that's what Ma that's how Maggie feels, honestly, when... Uh, Diane basically said that she's leaving and that she's had enough. It turns out there isn't really going to be a deal. Unless I misread the signals, but... So, yeah, uh, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, share, favorite it. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. As always, it's Dr. Stephen James. I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.